Hi guys, Danny Flexen and Joe Lee back for the latest Boxed In tier list um, that we do every week. Joe, how you doing? Yeah, all good this week. Excited for fight camp now. A few weeks left and uh, can't wait to talk about it as always. Good, good. Well, we're going to start off with fight camp card number one. Five fights, ten fighters. And we've yes. got three new categories this week um, in which to put the um, various fighters on the card um, emanating from the matchroom HQ. And they are hot prospect. So for the um, younger guys who've still got uh, a lot to prove, but presumably their best days in front of them. Yeah. The improvers. So they're the guys we think will um, have better times in front. So wherever, whatever level they're competing at at the moment, they can or at least have the potential to advance from there. And the non-movers, which sounds a bit harsh, but, you know, it's better than also rands. The non-movers are the people who we think will probably stay around the level where they're currently competing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Joe, you're going to kick us off, I believe. I am. And we're going to start, work our way up. And I believe the first fight of the night is, of course, Nathan v Bennett versus Dalton Smith. So I'm going to start with Nathan Bennett, someone who's entering a very telling stage in their career, entering his prime at around the age of 27. The only thing that is sort of hard to... To, to judge when putting him in a category is he's never faced an opponent with a positive win ratio. So he, he's, his resume is not great. But the thing I do say is he's obviously facing Dalton Smith. He says yes to anyone. And that's what you got to respect about him. He's, he's had his, this is his time now and he's not backed off and said, I can't train. This is, a, this is an unfortunate time. Like I can't train. I can't get a full camp. So no, he snatched the opportunity when he can get it. And for that reason, him being 27 as well, I've got to put him in, in, in provers because, you know, he's lost only once um, to a guy that was 7-7, seven and seven, which is obviously not the best when you look back at it. But it was a decent fight. He thought he won it. And, you know, I feel like he's still got a lot to improve considering he, he'll accept fights like this Dalton Smith fight. It's a big, big stage. And if he can win on August the 1st, then certainly he'll be, he's an improver. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. Um, I'll obviously come through with Dalton Smith, uh, who easily falls into the hot prospect category, not just yeah. because he's young, but because he's displayed already, both as an mm. amateur and in the early days as a pro. Uh, unique talent, I think it's fair to say, both in terms of kind of speed and basic skills, but also uh, boxing brain and yeah. shot selection. Trained, of course, in a gym with Charlie Edwards, Sonny Edwards, and so on under his father, a great trainer in Grant Smith. So, yeah, he could really go very, very far in this sport, and he seems really dedicated as well. So, for me, uh, Dalton Smith goes into that hot prospect category without any doubt. Definitely. That one's, that one's a no-brainer, I think. It's a good way to kick off the card and to kick off the first fight back, really. Um, next up. Fabio Wardley versus Simon Valili, and I'm going to go with Simon Valili. He's obviously had two losses in his career, and and he's had some wars along the way. He's been in some lot of wars. He's obviously lost to Breedus as well. <clears throat> and I think this is similar to Bennett, I guess. He's at a stage where if he loses, I think he'd be in the non-movers category. But he looks, he looks like a change man. Like I've seen interviews with him and, and he seems like he's genuinely changed because he's, he's obviously had some home troubles um, leading up to other fights. And he says he's changed for this fight. He looks ready. He's got a young prospect who's coming up against, which is why it makes it such a great fight. Two Brits at heavyweight fighting is never a bore, boring fight. Well, a home night anyway. But um, I'm going to put him in... I'm going to put him in improvers just because the way I see I just I just see him putting up a decent fight and I know he's been compared to like a punch bag a lot of the time and, and often he doesn't hit back and you know he just takes a lot but I think he's he's got something in him and, and the fight on August the 1st may show it you're too nice for this game Joe you're too nice for boxing he would have been straight into non-movers if I'd have had <clears> him on my side of the draw but yeah that's fine um, nothing against Simon Valili I just think he's yeah. had his chance now at domestic level, and if he was going to translate his uh, form from the amateurs through to the pros, he'd probably have done it by now. Yeah. But hey, we'll see. You know, maybe he knocks Wardley out and around, and I look stupid, but we shall see. Talking <laughs> of, uh, yeah. good guy, not quite as young as the likes of Dalton Smith, but still goes into the hot prospect category for me. Um, a different type <coughs> of heavyweight, a kind of modern type of heavyweight in the mould of 
you know, a fury and people like that, and that he likes to yeah. get up his toes, move around a bit, pick people off, counter punch as well, but with a real dig. And someone who sparred the cream of uh, heavyweight boxers across Europe um, and even in the US, um, someone who's always looking to test himself in the gym as well as in the ring. This is uh, as close as he's come so far to an acid test, although I think he will get past for Lily in some style. Um, but yeah, yeah, definitely hot prospect for me. Yeah, decent, nice and easy. <clears throat> and uh, first two picks for you were pretty uh, simple, and I think they'd both have gone in the hot prospects as well for me. Next up, Jordan Gill. Interesting for him. Obviously, his, his boxing career took a massive turn for the worst in Nottingham when he lost. Obviously, he's trying to David Colwell, pulling him out. He was getting knocked down. He was losing the fight, and it was the right thing to do. But since then, he's obviously been on a win streak, and, and he's got a big fight ahead of him. So he has to go in improvers for the third third fighter in a row. But I don't think anyone can disagree with this one, can you? Uh, no, I don't disagree with Jordan Gill. I think he has got his best days in front of him. I yeah. think Reese Bellotti is a much harder pick in this one because I think yeah, I was I think Bellotti Gill's a close fight. I think it's it's you know I do favour Gill, but I wouldn't be shocked if Bellotti pulled it off. But yeah. do I see Bellotti progressing from here to kind of European slash fringe world level? Probably not. I'd probably have to put him in non movers in that kind of spot. <laughs> Agreed. Domestic class. Um, he's talented. He's got a good punch. But I think he, he's been found wanting. Um, obviously, got stopped by Ryan Doyle, got caught, can happen yeah, to yeah. anyone. But I think he was beaten by Ryan Walsh, although some people had issues with the decision. I thought it was a fairly straightforward decision. Um, even though it was a competitive fight, I thought Ryan Walsh deserved to win that. And Ryan Walsh is kind of the domestic supreme, or he is the domestic supreme, he's a British champion. But he's also <laughs> unlucky not to have won the European title in the shot he had. So yeah. he's highly ranked by one of the world governing bodies as well. So it's not beyond the realms of possibility that Ryan Walsh gets a world title shot if he stays unbeaten for the next couple of years. So, do I see Bellotti surpassing that level, even though he had that really good performance out in Italy? No, I think top domestic level. I think he could win a British title, for example, in the future. He's still quite young, um, but I don't see him going much further than that. No, that's that's fair enough as well. I could definitely agree he's got power, but the things you said I agree with as well, mate. Gavin Gwynn. Now, this one was also an interesting one. Obviously, fighting for the British belt. And he's, I guess I'd say he made his name when he fought Joe Cordina in, in, a, in an absolute war. But he came out on the on the wrong end of it. But I think that's probably one of the reasons he's got this fight, because he got so much respect for fighting him and putting up a good fight, not just trying to play it safe. Um, but unfortunately, I, I can't see him winning the fight. And I think he has to go in the non-moves, because I think he belongs at this. He's got a certain level in him, and he's he's shown that he's a great fighter. But this level... I think is the level he belongs at, and I don't think he, I don't think he be, beats Tennyson. Yeah, I think that's the thing, and I think as long as he's going up against kind of fringe world class <laughs> fighters or European class fighters yeah. for the domestic belt, he's not going to win it. Yeah, so I think no, he, could, he, he probably deserves an easier chance at the Lonsdale belt. To be fair, mm -hmm. um, having fought Joe Caldino and now James Tennyson, yeah. Tennyson's a more difficult one because do you judge it based on where he's been or do you judge it based on where he is now? Um, because based on where he's been, a former world title challenger um, to Tevin Farmer, of course, former European champion when he beat Martin J. Ward, yeah. you'd say he's a non-mover because I don't see him winning a world title. That's just being honest. And I really like James Tennyson. He's a lovely guy, but I don't see him winning a world title, especially at the weight he's at now, which is probably the most exciting weight class in all of boxing and, and yeah. talent laden. Um, but if you judge it from where he's fighting on the fight camp card, which I guess is what we're doing, then I have to put him in improvers because he is better than domestic level, in my view. I'm surprised, you know, that he took this fight. He obviously wants to stay busy. Maybe he wants the Lonsdale belt. But I was surprised that he took a domestic calibre fight rather yeah. than pushing on to European and fringe world level again. <clears throat> so fair play to him for that. But I'd say improvers because he is better than domestic level. He's at least European class, possibly at lightweight. He's proved his European class at super feather. And yeah. maybe could garner a world title shot again in the future. Although I don't see him winning a world title with the current crop of uh, superb lightweights, many of whom are younger than him. Yeah, I think I don't I don't know where I would have put him. I think maybe the non movers, but it's just it's just because it's such a weird fight that he's taken. It makes uh, the category seem a bit Excuse confusing. It, to, to, it, yeah. To, yeah, yeah, but no, I mean I understand why you've done that, but um, 
Yeah, who knows? And I, I think we both agree he comes out with the victory in the co-main. But yeah. leads us on to the main. Uh, as it's been called, the egg versus the cheese. <laughs> oh, and I'm going to pick the egg. Obviously, being from Birmingham, he's just outside. And why not back him? I think... What, he's... literally? <laughs> Peering through the window? Yeah. <laughs> you bounce if you pick a cheeseman. And no, I think... Um... I've I've lost my train of thought now. No, I think um, obviously big win in Italy, and if he wins this fight against the Cheese, he hurdles into the top ten, maybe in the world. I think well, he's already what... IBF number five because he's got that IBF Inter strap. I mean, no one yeah. actually rates him as the fifth best. Super but that's what I'm saying. But, but he, certainly, he, he, well, rank it. He becomes a concrete top ten. I think. I think now it could be up in the air. Certainly in England, obviously, more people are going to say he's top 10. But I think he'd be concrete top 10. And yeah, maybe top top five. This, this is a much bigger fight. And, and it certainly states a bigger claim for him. And I think at the time in his career as well, he needs this. He, he's good. I think the way Cheeseman fights as well, they're both going to bite down on the gum shield and they're going to make for such a good fight. So where are you putting him? Oh, sorry, improvers. What's the all-important factor? Yeah, I know. Improvers, improvers. Okay, so that leaves me with Cheeseman, and I think, I think if you're going to put Eggington in improvers, and he's the IBF number five, and he's fought at a higher level, he's won a European title, whereas uh, Cheeseman fell short in his go at European glory, albeit against a very good fighter in Sergio Garcia. I think I have to put Cheeseman um, in the in the improvers category. I think he's fresher than Eggington. I think he's going to win the fight um, as well. I think it'll be a hard fight, but I think he will come through. I think a lot of people thought he should have beaten Scott Fitzgerald, who mm-hmm. I'd say is a yeah. fringe European class super welter. Um, and obviously, yeah, he lost to Garcia, but it wouldn't surprise me if Garcia won a world title in the future. So I think Cheeseman, with what he's learned, he's been chucked in tough early in his career. And as long as he hasn't got too many miles on the clock too early, and that's a big um, if, mm-hmm. I think he can go to at least European level in the future. So he goes into improvements for me. Yeah, definitely. And, and with the Fitzgerald fight as well, he was fighting... A different fight to what he usually does, and he thought he won it. But I think he'll, I think he'll probably revert back to his old ways, just because of he doesn't usually fight like he did against Fitzgerald. Like I guess on the back foot, he's he's usually more of a front aggressor, uh, and and hopefully that's the way it goes. Because I'd love to see boxing come back with a bang like that. Well, Eddie Hearn's boxing come back with a bang. <laughs> yeah. Um, obviously Frank Warren's tomorrow. Oh, but, um, yeah. <laughs> All right. That, well. That's, yeah, that's, that's episode one. Boxed in for this week. Maybe we'll do the uh, fight camp week two next mm. week. Might, we might as well do all of them. I like this, yeah. Yeah, we might as well I do all the of them. So, yeah, fight argument. camp week two next week. But let us know what you think in the comments below. Um, who did we get right? Who did we get wrong? Um, preferably who we got right more so. <laughs> but, but it's <laughs> up to you. Nah. Let us know and we'll respond to some of the comments.